Hi guys, so today's video was is actually a requested video and I'm doing a little talk about some financing and budgeting whilst you're at uni. Um, also, my hair and face is all over the place, I'm sorry. I'm having a shower today because I wash my hair on this day because I wash it twice a week and this is one of the two times a week I wash it. I just wanted to get this video done and like put out the way so it's ready to upload essentially. So yeah, we're going to ignore this. I'm sitting on my floor because I wanted this to be a bit more relaxed. I'll just move this back a little bit for you guys so you guys can see me better. Uh, I just wanted to be a bit more relaxed so I'm sitting on my floor. Um, um, I'm just going to tell you a strip right now. I didn't live on campus so if you don't already know I don't live on campus. I travelled and commuted from home to uni um, because my uni is in the same city that I've always lived in and always like just been was born in kind of thing so um, I commute to uni so that plays a big role in how your money is spent and how like you finance and stuff. Um, I'm just going to start talking about a bit about myself just so you know where we stand because it might be different for you. Um, so I'm very blessed in the sense that some parents I know once you hit 18 they like you to pay like some like you play like you to pay um, money towards the rent, money towards food and stuff but I've um, I like to think I'm very blessed that my parents didn't let me make me do that. Um, I try and give money towards groceries and stuff occasionally, like I'll slip a bit of money in, kind of thing, and I can get away with it, but usually they won't take it straight from me, so um, the money that I do get from finance is basically all towards me and my studies and my own personal needs, so the only thing I do spend my own money on is like my own things I need myself, like toiletries, makeup, clothes, books. Um, food that I want when I'm outside myself like if I go out with friends and stuff like that so that's when my money is spent on me kind of thing otherwise my mum actually gives me money usually which I'm still grateful for because like, a lot of people I know don't get money from their parents once they hit like the 18 age or like even like new 20 like I am I'm new 20 I'm gonna be 20 in three months and I still get money from my parents and I'm still babied by my parents quite a bit um so yeah um I have my little book here I mentioned it in another um, uni video and I kind of got all my notes written in here so, yeah. I'm going to talk a bit about finance first because I know some people um, who are going to, like the person who requested me to do this video um, is going into uni for the first time this September so I thought it would be helpful to just talk about the finance system and stuff like that. So I've got a bit of um, things down here. If I look down here as well, I have a bit of my laptop up too just so I can like refresh my memory a bit. But um, I used the... Um, gov website so like the government student finance gov or something like that i'll put pr it pr pr here or in the uh, description down below um that's the one i used when i was at college and that's where um, my college recommended us to get our finance from so that's what i did um and yeah they gave me pretty good finance actually um your finance usually depends on your household um this is like the money that comes to you but firstly i'm gonna talk about the money that goes to your uni because if you don't know already you have to pay nine thousand pounds in a year um to study every year in the UK, um, currently anyway because it may increase or deflate but currently it's £9,000 as I speak right now because that's why I'm paying. So what happens is that £9,000 goes to your uni so that goes straight to you, you don't see any of that money at all, that money goes straight to your uni and what they do, they give it to the uni, like the government essentially give it to the uni every like semester slash term. We only have two semesters roughly in um, uni which is for me was last year from September till about uh, December or like beginning of January kind of thing and then after January so like February till like May was the second semester so yeah of course I'm looking I'm actually going to give you actual figures like I wasn't going to share this because it's like private like what money I get and stuff like that but I thought I'd give it just to make um, you understand a bit better so I checked up on my finance website on the gov website and I was getting what was happening was it's from September to for September till February they were giving 2,250 to the uni and then from February till May they were giving 2,252 and then from May onwards they were giving, in May the, the uni were given 4,500 and that made up or together the 9,000 fees for studying in the UK. So then you, what you get is dependent on your household so if you have like a high income household you might get less, if you have a low income household like myself you'll probably get more um, and it all depends on like what your parents make annually, um, what kind of benefits they may get and stuff like that. From that you can get a grant and a loan. There's two things, a grant and a loan. Um, I don't know if that's changing but that's what I had, a grant and a loan. So originally when I first applied I only got the grant because that you don't have to pay back. Is that what I got? Yeah, I'm right. Um, just checking my notes again just to make sure. So what I got was the grant because that's what you don't have to pay back. You only have to pay back the 9,000 then or obviously 27,000 when you use the three years. But for that one year you only had to pay back the 9,000. So I was like, oh that makes it better, like less 
debt on myself essentially. So what happened was I was getting roughly 1,129 for these three like segmented times. So from September till January I was getting 1,129. Then January till April, 1,129. Then April until like basically till uni starts again, I was getting 1,129. And like the first month in I realised it wasn't enough because um, there was a lot of expenditures for me, particularly because I'm an English student and there was a lot of books that I needed to buy and it was a lot of money that I needed to spend on like textbooks and stuff like that and um, just generally on like a lot of things I needed to spend money on and I realised that wasn't enough and I realised some of my friends had already taken out like the loan as well and I was like wait why didn't I take it out before? So I rang up and I got, um, rang up? Yeah actually I did rang up didn't I? Yeah I rang up and then I managed to get myself um, the loan as well. Um, which obviously you have to pay back but I was like well since I'm already doing this I might as well now because I mean hopefully I'll end up in a good job to the point where I will be able to pay back so I was just like I might as well just do it now kind of thing because I need it so what I was getting was £947 roughly for the three like breakdown obviously because I started late with my grant I got it in October then January and then April but typically you get the grant and the loan together so next year coming up well after summer now I'll be getting them at the same time like so I'll get them September, January, April that's when I'll get them um, but obviously because I, I did it later I got it a bit later but yeah that's the loan that's what you have to pay back and um, this equal to a lot of money that was um, kind of like fun because it was like ooh I've never had this much money before like um, it was really exciting at the same time, but um, I did make a few mistakes that I probably shouldn't have done. I spent a lot of money on um, clothes. Actually, that's a lie, not clothes. I spent a lot of money on like pleasurable stuff. So I spent money on like makeup. I spent money on books. Um, by books, I don't mean like uni books. I mean books that I like to read at my own time. And I'm looking up because I have a bookshelf right up there, and I'm just looking at some of the books that I may have bought that I haven't read still. I like, yeah. I bought a lot of books, uh, bought a lot of like stationery stuff, like things I don't actually need but I just really enjoy. I bought a lot of planner stickers, um, stuff like that. And uh, actually I did spend a lot on makeup and makeup brushes in particular, um, which I kind of wish I didn't but obviously it's done now, what can I do kind of thing. Um, I'm grateful for the fact that I have the amount of makeup collection that I have. Um, but yeah, that's what I spent a lot of my money on. So. Um, from this year, my budgeting has started because I wasn't very good at budgeting, like I said, and I didn't have to pay for like groceries and stuff like that. But obviously, if you're going to live on campus or like living in a student accommodation, you have to take into mind that you're probably going to have to pay for bills and pay for um, food and stuff as well. So the option is is to just survive on just what you get from student finance or get a part-time job too. I didn't get a part-time job this year mainly because I've never worked ever before. So every time I applied for a job, no one would give me a job. So. Um, it was very very hard for me to get a job, that's when this summer I've been volunteering in order to get my like skills up a bit um, in order to help me get a job but obviously for second year I've got to do placement so I actually won't have time to have an actual part time job because if I have a part time job I'll have to like drop it by December time and then I can pick it back up after April so I think it's just easier just to get a job after April kind of thing like so once like the placement's done and the major hard work is done I'll get a job straight after that um, so yeah for summer kind of thing so that's what I'm going to do most likely but a job is probably essential if you're going to be living on campus or living in student accommodation because you will need money I've heard so many like horror stories like oh my god before I went to uni I watched so many videos and I was like hearing horror stories about how people were like broke and stuff and like didn't have food or like were surviving on cereal and like it's really bad you don't want to like you still want to live like a decent lifestyle you want to take care of yourself like eat proper food so you should probably take that into mind um like I said obviously I didn't have to do that because one I live home so everything like my bed is here like I don't have to pay for like my electricity I don't have to pay for my bills water heat anything like that because my parents pay for that But I will suggest doing some kind of budgeting like this is the the finance bits talked about that's my money that I would get the budgeting is the important part I didn't do much budgeting like I said at all um, until like just after second like the last semester finished and she was like oh shit maybe I should have done some like budgeting and stuff so this is where I started I'm gonna get my laptop for this because it's just easier I probably will have like a screen over here so you probably won't see my face but you'll be able to see the screen like my computer screen you'll see my hear my voice but not the screen um you won't see me so um I made a little budget for September to December because I feel like that was realistic enough for me I can't do like a whole year I think the best way to do it is either weekly or monthly um so I'm going to teach you some different ways that I've been doing so this is the first one this is the term like the, the semester the September December the money that I will get how I'm going to use that money so I wrote down 
when it's expected to come. You will see all these finances and stuff and the actual details, which I actually probably don't want to show to you guys, but I will not actually probably just because I think it will make more sense to you guys if you see my actual figures and my money that comes in and stuff. Um, so here I wrote when it's coming in, I should be coming on this day, and then I wrote how much my grant is and how much my maintenance loan is for that time. And then I thought how much totally it will equal out to. That's a lot of money for that amount of time. But before you don't know it, that money will go if you don't budget correctly. Um, so then I started to write down the things that I definitely need to spend money on. Things like my bus pass. My bus pass is very important. Like I said, I commute to uni. And I take two buses every day, back and forth. So that means I need a bus pass because I can't be spending money on like a day saver or like a ticket for the day kind of thing. I probably will for the first few days until my money comes in so I can get my bus pass. But... I can't be wasting money on that kind of thing, so a bus pass is essential, and they do cost a lot, so I had to budget that in, like, I budgeted in, like, a sort of, um, like, increments, so, like, 150 to 200, just because I'm unsure if the price has gone up and stuff, but that's what it was for me, 150, so I'm, like, just estimating that in. Then I also have a trip that I'll be having for one of my, um, creative writing modules, so I have to, like, pay a bit of money towards that, because obviously the uni will pay a bit, and then we pay a bit, um, so I put that money in, then also I have another, a trip, kind of, essentially, um, I have to go to the Birmingham Literature Festival for one of my modules so I put in like the most expensive ticket because there's three different types of tickets and then also there's like individual events you can go to obviously it's all paying for those but I thought a ticket would make it more worth it because you have like a variety of different events so I put in the most expensive ticket just to be on the safe side obviously I don't know which one I'll actually want to go to yet but there's like three different choices so I put the expensive one in just so I can have like a little bit of leeway with money and stuff then this obviously isn't really important to some people but to me it is because I do YouTube I do some photography here and there as well so um I wanted a new lens, I put the lens in, I put a website for it, uh, put the price in, everything, and then another essential for me personally is some boots, some nice winter boots. So I put that in as well. And then there's on the bottom is the things I want to buy. As you can see, I don't actually I don't know if you if it will change by the time I actually do the screen recording. But currently there's just some makeup brushes that I really want but don't necessarily need, so they're just on the want page. Um but the need things are the ones that I will is, are like necessity for me. For you, a necessity may be something different, but for me, this is like my necessities, and that's enough for me. Um, so yeah. But another thing I will also do, I'm going to show you another page now, is some books scheduling, kind of planning of the books that I need. Um, so obviously, like I said, I do. An, I'm an English student, so as an English student, I need lots of books. Um, so what I did was I wrote down all the books I needed, um, the prices of different websites, and as you can see, there's two different websites here. There's A Books and Book Depository. I tried to get some secondhand books because they're cheaper. Last year I was a bit like, like I wanted all brand new books, but it wasn't going to work out. So I knew I have to like spend a bit less and get a bit of a secondhand one. It's just not too big of a deal. I was a bit worried last year because I was like, oh, I don't want to touch someone else's book. It's like I want a clean, pristine book, but it's alright, it's just for studying, it's not a major deal, it's not like my own personal like pleasurable book. Even then like, I still like to buy now books from um, the sec like charity shop and stuff now as well because of like doing this experience of buying secondhand books. Um, so I've given two websites here, A Books and Book Depository and looked at the different prices for different books. Like if they vary, if books I can find on different websites, I always support some books from Amazon too obviously. And then I try to see which ones like work out a better price, so if it works out better to buy from A Books, it does work out buy to better buy it from Amazon or what? And then I wrote down a total of how much that will equal to. So as you can see here, I spent about £84 on books. Um, I think that went up a bit because I didn't include some of the Amazon links here. Um, so I spent about roughly £100 on books. Um, so that was like last semester, so I had a bit of money left over from last semester and I used that money to buy these books. But either way, I still made a list because I felt like it was really clever to make a list and actually budget out what you can spend on books and what you can't because obviously books are important and you should probably spend the money on the books versus spending money on makeup or clothes first that makes make sure I know that I have books to buy and make sure I do that first versus buying clothes so then afterwards which I haven't done yet but I will explain is I'll make a list of clothes that I want um, so for instance um, I cleaned up my wardrobe yesterday and I know I'm missing a few items that are like compulsory for the winter so I need a few jumpers that I will definitely need. I need a new pair of jeans possibly too because it's going to get colder and I probably will need some thicker clothes. Um, so I'm going to make a list of things I need, try and look up at different variable ones, like look at different shops and see what I can like splurge a bit more on what I can like go for a bit of a cheaper version for. Um, my foot's kind of gone to sleep sitting here. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to stretch it out. Um, what I can like just splurge a bit what I can like go to a cheaper shop like Primark or wherever and get a cheaper version um, and then kind of go ahead and buy them then and then figure out like like the total and stuff and do that that's another thing I do and then also um, I don't know if I showed you in the planner video that I made last time and um, the planner video when I was showing you how to use a plan as a student I flipped through some of my weeks I, you may have seen like some little um, 
money stickers in there. Sometimes I will do this um, through my planner. I'll write down what I spend every day, but not necessarily because I'm not too much of a budget toucher every day, but that's actually a good idea. If you have a book or a planner, you can do that in your planner, like every day you spend something, but it may get crowded up in your planner if you just want to stick to having your planner for assignments and stuff. So you can have a notebook dedicated to like money and stuff, so you can write like every week what you spend, so you can write this every week, this is when this the groceries I spent £60 this week, um, and like then I bought this top from New Look or something, it was this much, or like I spent this much on my phone bill or something like that and you can write those kind of things down in an account book. I don't necessarily have that mainly because I don't pay for a lot of bills like I said myself. Um, even my phone bill, I'm very, like I've said, I'm very blessed my mum actually pays for my phone bill um, because my phone bill is very, um, it's actually a really cheap phone bill, um, it's not her expensive and she pays for it because it comes, it works out better for her to have multiple phone bills on one contract because like, it works out like discounted and stuff, it's kind of complicated but yeah. Um, so that's where she pays from. But I do also sometimes give like money towards her and stuff for that sometimes too. And then like I try and limit myself, make sure I don't go over anything because I don't want her to spend over necessarily. Yeah, uh, but obviously if you do have bills and stuff, it's really good to have an accounts book. But um, I just find this method of like kind of using like a monthly or such a sort of like termly kind of like budgeting plan is really good to plan out what you need and what you don't need. So like I said, I wrote what down what I needed because I definitely need to buy that, but then I also wrote down things I want, like leisure things that I want, like I want some makeup brushes, I really want some new makeup brushes, but do I need them? Not necessarily, so they're not important until I have some extra money to bear over, and that's when you can spend that money on yourself. Um, I think that's all for today's video, because I don't really, I'm not really good at budgeting, um, it's not something that I've really skilled in yet, but obviously after the first year I've learnt some things from the mistakes that I made. Um, yeah, I hope this video was helpful to the person who requested it. You know who you are, you requested it, I hope you like this video. Um, I hope it was very helpful to everyone else too. Um, like I said, I'm not very skilled in this, so I'm sorry if this wasn't the best video, but I tried to make it as best as I could. Remember to give us a thumbs up if you liked it, um, leave your comments in the description leave your comments in the, I always say leave your comments in the description, leave your comments down below, um, I've got two more videos, back to school videos coming after this, and then that should be it, from back to school series, I've been a bit late this year, but I've tried to do quite a few videos, that's why, um, so yeah, remember to subscribe if you want to see more videos, I upload once a week, usually on the weekend, so yeah, I should talk to you guys real soon, toodles!